Hello everyone, my name is Andrew Sharapka and I am on-set supervisor for 28 Panfilov's man film. And today we gonna be talking about very important thing, I mean uh, distortion grids and how they affect on camera tracking. There are two types of distortion grids, grid line and checkerboard. They has no big differences and each supervisor choose what he like more. I prefer checkerboard because for 3D equalizer this is a better solution. But because in this tutorial I want to do all steps in one program, I choose Nuke and for Nuke does not matter what type of grid we will use. Distortion grids uses for collect information about lens distortion and then smaller focal lens we will use, then bigger amount of distortion we will get. Lens distortion bending objects in our frame and extremely increases this amount on borders. For collecting full and correct information about this distortion, we will need a 100% fill our frame of this grid. For example, I choose footage from 28 Panfilov's man film, where camera moving straight. This is how it looks from camera and this is how it looks like from different position. Let's take a look on green balls, they are making straight line. And now I am gonna be show you what happens if we do not use distortion grid for 3D camera tracking. At first we choose right settings of our project. Hit S in node graph. Yes, uh, 24 fps is correct. And let's choose format for our frame. For us it's 2048 by 1152. Next, connect camera tracker node to our footage. In this node we choose right sensor size. In our film we used Arri Alexa camera and Nuke already has preset for this sensor. After that we specify focal lengths for this footage. Probably you will ask me a question, how we can find out this? Ok, before shoot each footage, director assistant write this information on film clutter. In our example it's 35 mm. Let's give this information to Nuke. We can choose known and then Nuke will use fixed amount of focal lengths. Or we can choose approximate constant that gives Nuke more freedom to calculate camera movement if our results with known option are not good enough. But we choose known and type 35 mm. Anyway, before we start tracking without lens distortion, I want to tell you how we can collect information in situations when we don't have a distortion grids. For that Nuke has a lens distortion node. This node analyzes movement of pixels in frame and build approximate amount of distortion. After that we apply this distortion to our footage and connect camera tracker node. The same function has unknown lens option. If we activate this and check undistort input, camera tracker makes 3D tracking. And after that this node also undistort our footage. But let's get back to our plan and be a really bad guys that don't use lens distortion for calculations. Other settings we will use by default because we don't need make a perfect camera solve. We only activate preview features because it makes tracking not so boring. Also very important thing is isolate all moving objects. For that I already prepared rotopaint node with raw masks. Let's connect this node to camera tracker and choose mask alpha. Now all moving objects isolated for tracking. After that we specify our active frame range from 500 to 1195 frame and hit track. Perfect, tracking is done and after that we hit solve button. Next we create scene and look on top view in our 3D space. We see that camera trajectory and point cloud extremely bends, but we absolutely know that in real life camera moves straight. Ok, time to fix this situation and make camera tracking with using our distortion grid. Let's connect lens distortion node to our grid. Go to grid analysis tab and choose thin line and hit analyze grid. So now our grid undistorted and all lines go straight. After that these undistorted values we apply to our footage. Let's duplicate it and connect lens distortion node. When this node active we hit D and see how change our footage with undistortion. Next we will do all the same manipulations with tracking as we done before. 
For that we create camera tracker node, change our film back size and specify focal lengths. In lens distortion menu we don't change anything because input image already undistorted. Connect our masks and specify our active frame range. Now all prepared for tracking and let's start. While tracking process I tell you short life hack from our compositing guru Gadomina Ivana, who recommended make tracking for short in different script, because Nuke very often make autosave, and if this script has too much information, these autosaves start freezing project performance. Good news, tracking is done and let's take a look at size of our unsaved project. Hit Ctrl O and this is our project. Now it's size 140 kilobytes. Then save this project after tracking. And now our project contain 15 megabytes information about movement of each tracker in camera tracker node. But we need only information about camera movement. Now we click on solve button, create a scene and on top view we can see what we get. This result is much better. Yes, camera movement line don't perfect straight. Uh, this because we did very raw tracking and for better results we need to do manual tracking for control each tracker. After that we can see how important using cleans distortion data for camera tracking and geometry reconstruction in scene. But this is not all functions of lens distortion, because at the next step we will use this data for applying distortion to all elements that we will add to our footage. Of course, we can compose elements with undistorted footage, but this is not perfect because a lens distortion node belongs to transform group nodes and have filtration that affects on original footage. Now let's see how apply lens distortion to our CG elements. For example, we create card that oriented to our ground. Add checkerboard, make them a little bit smaller. Create scanline render node. Connect our card to scene. Connect camera and scene to scanline render. And merge this with our undistorted footage. Ok, this is our result without applying lens distortion. Now we copy this node and uncheck undistort parameter. Done. If we compare our original footage and our shot after applying lens distortion plus lens undistortion, we don't see any big differences. But much more correct is apply lens distortion not to final image. Much better is apply distortion only for CG elements. For that we place lens distortion node after scanline render and this lens distortion node we disable. Now it's almost over, but we need fix this style effect on edges of our image. This happens because after scanline render node we have image 2148 by 1152 pixels and when we add lens distortion this image shrinks. But because scanline render has no data outside work area, Nuke algorithm applies this standard tile effect. To avoid this we need in scanline render type small amount for overscan. Great. Now tile is gone and we have right composed image. And let's take a look one more at result that we have without lens distortion. And at result after applying lens distortion. I think this is not need comments anymore. For you practicing we upload this footage and distortion grid for him. Link in description for this video. So I hope after this tutorial you will always using lens distortion, shooting distortion grids for each camera sensors and lenses and compose images right. And have a good solve. If this tutorial helps you to understand lens distortion basics, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and Facebook page. My name is Andrew Sharapka and see you soon.